Okay, so here's chapter two, section three for I am two. And we're going to talk about translations or transformations in general on parabolas. And remember, transformations are just how can we move or change the graph by um, kind of placing different numbers um, within the standard form. So a translation moves the graph to the left, right, up, or down. So that's just a basic movement. It's just shifting it one way or the other. Um, the graph of f of x equals x squared plus k is the graph of f of x equals x squared translated vertically because, look, it's plus k. If it was minus k, um, well, vertically just means up or down. They're not saying specifically, but plus k means up, minus k means down. Um, and they tell us that right here, too. So if k is greater than 0, the graph is going to go up. If k is less than 0, the graph is going to go down. So if we're adding to the end uh, a positive number, it's going to go up. If we're adding, subtracting to the end, it's going to go down. The graph of g of x equals x minus h squared, so the whole quantity squared. So now I'm... I'm it's within the square is the graph of f of x equals x squared translated horizontally. So if it's within the x, if it's right next to it, it's, it's kind of being squared, not kind of, it is being squared. Now we're looking at going left or right. So if it's greater than 0, it's going to go to the right. If it's less than 0, it's going to go to the left. Um, so that's... It, we just have to pay attention to where we're putting that plus or minus. Is it on the outside or is it on the inside? Uh, all right, let's see. Um, dilations. So dilations stretch or compress. And when we say stretch or compress, we're actually saying like vertically stretch or compress. So it's almost like you grabbed the two arrows and then the bottom vertex and you stretch it out. Or if it was upside down, it could be the top vertex. But you're like stretching it out that way. Or, same idea, you put your hand on the arrows and your hand on the, the bottom or the top and you squish it down to compress it. So, stretching it makes it skinnier and compressing it makes it kind of fatter. Kind of squishes it out. Um, Alright, the graph of g of x equals a x squared is the graph of f of x equals x squared stretched or compressed vertically. So, it, dep it depends on if it's positive or negative. So we're multiplying in front of the x. And if the absolute value of a is greater than 0, then, and this, this so there's a very, so it could be greater than 0, meaning that it's um, 1 or bigger. Then we're going to stretch out the graph. If it's less than 0 or less than 1, can't be less than zero. Sorry, I said that funny the first time. It's the absolute value. So basically, we're looking for a fraction here. Then the graph is compressed. Okay, so those are the, the two pieces we're looking for there. Reflections, it flips a figure across a line. Um, usually, it's one of the axes, but not always. Um, so the graph of negative f of x is the reflection of the graph f of x equals x squared across the x-axis. The graph of f of, e, f of f of negative x is the reflection of the graph of f of x equals x squared across the y-axis. So if the negative is applied outside, then it, it flips over the x-axis. If it's applied inside here, then it's applied to the y-axis. So remember, think of f of x like y, if you kind of think of that. So it's like a negative y, then... The reflection happens over the y-axis. If it's a negative x, which is exactly what this x represents, then it's over the y-axis. All right, so let's take a look at that on this next screen here. And we're just going to describe what's happening to these three problems. So all we have to do is describe the translation. Uh, so if we're looking at this and we have 10 plus x, so this is happening inside the parentheses. Inside. So if we go back and we look, we had outside and we had inside. 
So this is going to go horizontal. So it's going to be left or right. We're adding 10. It's a positive 10. I'm not talking about th this is a this positive belongs to the x, but it's a positive 10. So we're adding 10. Um, and that's actually one thing I did want to bring up. They had that backwards on this one. Um, because it's inside a parenthesis, it's actually the opposite. So if it's greater than 0, it would be left. If it's less than 0, it would be right. So it's actually the opposite of what we think. So if it's a negative number, then you go left. If it's a positive number, um, sorry, if it's a positive number, you go left. If it's a negative number, you go right. I'm mixing myself up with the corrections here. Um, and it's because it's in that grouping, it kind of does the opposite of what you think it's going to do. So that's, that's always true whenever we're kind of inside of a, a grouping symbol. So this is going to go 10 units, uh, and it's going to go 10 units left. And it's just a translation, translation. So we're not, we're not stretching or compressing it. We're not flipping it over any axis or anything like that. We're just translating it 10 units to the left. Um, all right, so, um, and that's based on f of x equals x squared, which is our parent function. So this is like the very basic bottom of the line function you can get for a parabola. Um, and then we're saying from this one, we're going to take this guy and we're going to shift it 10 units left. And then that's what this where this guy would land. Okay, so now we're subtracting two fifths, um, and I know it's they're they're kind of out of order compared to the the examples we had here, but it's still the same idea. So we're adding a number or subtracting a number. So this is going to be a vertical translation, and this one is literal. So if it's negative, it's going to go down. If it's positive, it's going to go up. So this is a negative two fifths. So we are going to go down, so we're going to translate, translation, and it's going to go two, whoops, two fifths units down from f of x equals x squared. All right, the last one, we have nine minus x squared. So now we have two things happening x squared is negative, so that means we're multiplying by a negative number, so, and we're adding 9 here. So we have a translation, translation, and that's going to be 9 units up, okay, because this is a positive 9. So we are going to go 9 units up, and we have to deal with this negative 1, x squared. Um, and what this is, it's a, it looks like it's being it's negative 1 times x. I mean, technically it is, but we have to be careful about this because we're not actually doing this piece here. Because remember, this can't actually be negative. It's either going to be greater than 0 or it's going to be less than 1, but it's the absolute value. So it's, it's going to be between 0 and 1. It's going to be a fraction. So it's actually this guy down here, and it's specifically this one. So what we're doing is we're, we have a negative parabola. So it's a negative a, and that's what this represents here, is that there's a negative in front. Even though I know it's, it's out of order a little bit, it's negative x squared plus 9 is how it should be written, so that we can see that this is a, and it's negative, the, the negative 1 there. So it's going to reflect, reflect, um, across at the x-axis. Uh, x axis, oops, axis from f of x equals two. So, um, and I keep putting that on on here because this is what we're 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 basing everything off of this parent function, and we're moving it from there. We're manipulating that parent one. So just be careful about that. But um, we are all done with section three. I will see you in section four.